What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode. Today I'm very excited to speak to you about my favorite cycling related gadgets that will not only enhance your riding experience but will also act as great gifts for uh, your fellow cyclist friends. So let's dive into it. So we're gonna start small with this video and uh, gonna first look at some more budget-friendly options, um, which are definitely um, yeah worth having a look at. But of course, further down the video, we're gonna get to the, of course, more exciting, but also slightly more budget-heavy stuff. So yeah, first of all, you might have already guessed it from my previous videos, will be TPU inner tubes. They basically provide a very great weight saving, which is something that every cyclist, of course, uh, is looking out for, at uh, a very affordable price. So I would think that the price per saved gram ratio is, um, I would say, one of the best among bike parts here as well. And um, yeah, these are now from right now. I purchased them on AliExpress. I think they are around six or seven euros a piece. Um, there is one which is actually even 24 grams rather than the standard 36 grams. But anyways, both of them are definitely lighter than your classical butyl inner tube. And the cool thing about it is that both of them, as you might notice from the package, are compatible with disc as well as rim brakes. So something that I, as um, a heavy rim brake rider from time to time, was a little bit worried about that they might explode or overheat or uh, yeah, just leak air. But to be honest, I've been riding them for a couple of weeks now and no issues so far, loving it. Next up, we get some gadgets that have to do with tire pressure. First up, there's this Psych Plus automatic pump. So for me, this replaced my CO2 cartridge and it also replaced my small portable pump because basically with the push of a button, it starts pumping up your tire. I was able to pump up almost three tires from completely flat. Um, I think they've been 25 or 28 millimeter ones. I don't really remember, but definitely good enough in case you hit the puncture and you have a flat and you need to pump up one or two tires. The second item in this category is, uh, yeah, this pressure checker from Topeak. So I think this is pretty much a great gift uh, for the cyclist that almost has everything already. Um, so when you're pumping up your tires, the indicator on your pump isn't the most accurate one, but with this one, you basically just attach it to the valve and you get the digital reading of uh, yeah what your tire pressure actually is. So you can even very accurately optimize your tire pressure for the ride. Next up, by far my most favorite tool, which is actually a tool, is this beautiful torque wrench. Super essential when it comes to anything that you want to adjust on your bike, if it is adjusting your handlebars, if it is adjusting your saddle height, your position of your saddle, especially when working with carbon components, it is very, very important that you apply the right torque setting to your bolts so you don't crack any super expensive carbon components. So this particular one seems to be from a company that's called Pro Bike Tool, but there are many, many companies out there that you can get torque wrench from. Just make sure that it has a nice wide range. So this particular one goes down from two Newton meters up to 20 Newton meters, which pretty much covers almost every important torque setting that you need while building a bike, maybe except a 40 Newton meters, which you might need to um, yeah, attach your bottom bracket. But there, of course, you can also just play it by feel um, because 40 Newton meters is just, uh, yeah quite tight. But then sometimes if you're out on a ride and your seat post slips um, and you have to readjust it, of course you might not have your big torque wrench with you because it is quite heavy with all those bits that are coming with it. I recently found this uh, Nano Torque Bar X from Topeak, which is a very nice portable torque wrench which you can put in your saddlebag or just in the back of your jersey pocket. And it works this way. You basically take out this little part here, which is the actual torque wrench. And then up here, you have two of your most important bits, which are compatible with, I would say, most seat posts and handlebar bolts. Then once you actually have the right bit out, so let's take the small one here, you attach it to this part here and the actual torque measuring part goes in here and you have your little torque wrench. And it works this way. You have this little scale on here and while torquing up the bolt, this scale will move around um, and you basically, yeah, you just stop torquing once that little dot reaches the torque value that you actually want to torque up that particular bolt. So I think very smart solution, nice and compact, not too heavy. So yeah, I think this is a great present. And just in general, I think you can make a lot of friends out there on a group ride if you are the one who can actually, yeah, 
get out that torque wrench in case somebody needs some help in uh, yeah, readjusting their seat post or handlebars. So the next thing on this list uh, is something that I didn't really pay too much attention to, especially in the beginning when I started cycling, and it is insoles. Your feet are of course your main contact point with your bike when it comes to power transfer, so it is very essential that your feet are feeling comfortable and that they're also positioned in a way that you have very efficient power transfer as well. These insoles are from a company called G8 Performance. Um, you can of course also just get custom-made insoles as well, but the cool thing which I really like about this particular system is that it is modular, so you can basically work your way up to the position where you actually want your feet to be in. So you can basically start low and once your feet adapt, you can start replacing individual modules and uh, yeah, push your feet into the position where they feel most comfortable with and where you get the most pain relief in case you're having pain. I, for example, had a lot of outer knee pain, which uh, yeah, riding a couple of weeks with these fixed it right away. So now um, I gotta say I've never been so comfortable on a bike. So yeah, think about insoles, also a great present. Next up on the list, are bike lights. So something that I think every cyclist should think of um, because safety is very important on the bike. And let's here start now with, um, yeah, front lights. So there are two lights which I'm frequently using. One is this Bontrager one and the other one is from Raveman. What is very great about those is that of course they have their regular dim state, full on state, but they also light up with this irregular flashing pattern, which I think attracts way more attention than just a static light. I like the Bontrager one because it's very tiny, very light. You can just mount it underneath um, your handlebar, under your computer mount or wherever you actually want on the bike because it is so tiny. But I recently purchased this Raveman one and it is particularly great because the mounting effort is almost zero if you have a computer mount. Because if you look at the bottom of it, it has a regular Garmin mount and at the top, it also has a Garmin mount. So you pretty much place it in between your bike computer and your Garmin mount. So your bike computer just sits on top of it, which I think is great, fantastic idea. And yeah, makes installation very, very straightforward. So while talking about lights, let's also talk about lights in the rear. There are two particular ones that I want to talk to you about. The first one is this Garmin radar one. First of all, I really, really like this one because it also has this irregular flash pattern and you can see this light from far, far, far away. But the other big advantage of this light is, like the name already indicates, it has a radar system. So it is able to detect upcoming cars that are behind you and it is able to send this information to your head unit, in case you have a head unit, or to your mobile phone if you're riding with your mobile phone up front. So you can really see if a car is approaching, kind of roughly what speed they're approaching at. So you have different indicators for cars approaching you in a regular uh, speed or cars that are really hammering towards you at high speeds and you really want to pay attention of maybe um, yeah, drifting further away to the side of the road just to stay safe. So to be honest, I think this was one of the best upgrades I've ever done to my bike. It gives me peace of mind when I'm riding. I don't constantly need to look behind me to see if there is a car coming. Of course, when you're taking over or something, you always basically tilt your head to see if there's really nobody because I wouldn't say that this is 100% accurate all the time, but I would say that it's like 95% there. So whenever I'm taking over, I'll just have a look. But sometimes also with electric cars, especially, which are very quiet and you can't really hear them approaching, especially if you're going fast, it is detecting it and it gives you that extra level of security while you're riding, especially when you want to take over. The other light in this category is this Magic Shine rear-facing light, which uh, actually also has a built-in camera, as you might notice. So even though, unfortunately, this one doesn't send radar signal to your head unit, so you don't really see or you don't really get notified if a car is approaching you from the back, but it actually does a continuous recording on what's happening behind you. So just in the unfortunate case of an accident, you have a recording and uh, yeah, can hopefully identify a license plate. The quality, to be honest, isn't that great when it comes to uh, using that footage as actual video footage for videos like this. But um, yeah, it is good enough to identify a number plate of somebody that uh, yeah might have caused some problems along the ride. Okay, and now we're getting to the juicy stuff. So if you're the kind of person that uh, likes to document their rides like I do, um, yeah, something with a lens on it is pretty exciting. But of course, you want to keep things light, you want to keep things compact so you can 
basically throw them in your back pocket or you can mount them to your bike easily. And uh, yeah, what I found is this DJI Action 2 um, is actually the perfect camera for me when I'm cycling. I mean, other reviews say that it's overheating after a long period of time when you're recording, but to be honest, I haven't ran into that problem because most of the time I'm only recording like 30 second to one minute clips. I'm not having it run for like minutes and minutes and minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, together with this extra battery pack slash front display, you can actually nicely mount this underneath your handlebars or if you're talking to yourself, um, yeah, to do a little bit of vlogging along the way. Um, yeah, this seems like the perfect form factor. You, of course, don't necessarily need to bring that extra battery and that extra display. You can also just go with this one. Of course, then you have limited battery. But I gotta say, if you're most of the time like me, shooting those 30 second clips also without the battery pack, this is definitely good enough. And it is the perfect form factor to just throw it back in your jersey pocket or mount it underneath your bike computer. So the other thing with the lens on it is this uh, Hover X1 drone, which you might have seen in one of my other videos already. But uh, yeah, it definitely belongs on that list. The cool thing about this is, as you see, it is very, very portable. It's something that you can easily throw in the back of your jersey pocket. It unfolds when you want to fly with it. And um, yeah, the cool thing about it is that it doesn't require a remote control. Everything is being controlled via one button here at the top. I mean, you have a second button, of course, to turn it on or off, but you select which mode you want. And you have various modes here, like a mode where it just hovers around and uh, basically pans to uh, keep you in the frame. But there are also modes where it basically just follows you while you're out on the ride. And the cool thing is that it starts and lands out of your hand. So yeah, it's very easy to uh, just do that and trigger it during a very quick stop um, yeah, on your right. The only downside is it is not super fast. So um, yeah, I wouldn't say that it is great for a descent. Um, I think it goes up to like 22, 23 kilometers an hour when it comes to following uh, you. If you're faster than that, it basically just stops and hovers in the air and waits for you to pick it up. But um, I'm really, really big fan of this. Um, of course, it's not the cheapest, but yeah, definitely a great present for somebody um, or for yourself. And the last thing on my list, of course, are bike computers. So I'm having two of them actually at the moment. One is the Karoo 2 from Hammerhead and one is the Bolt 2 from Wahoo. Why do I have two? Initially, I started with the Karoo 2 from Hammerhead. I really, really like it. The advantage of this one is that it has a touch screen, it has full colors. It is very easy to navigate the menus and everything with it because it is an Android based system. Um, unfortunately, the big downside of it is battery life. So if you're going out for a half day or almost all day adventure, um, you might run into issues, might have to charge it up uh, somewhere during coffee stop, but that also requires to carry a power brick or a power bank with you. So it just adds to weight. Um, but of course, great for like the shorter ride if you're just going out for like four or five hours, um, definitely a great option. And then there is this uh, Bolt 2 from Wahoo. As you might have noticed, it is quite a bit smaller. Because of that, it is also quite a bit lighter. So I bought this one also just for my, um, yeah, for my lightweight steel build. So uh, coming up here. And um, it doesn't have a touch screen, which can be seen as a downside. But uh, in this regard, I would actually think that it is an upside because you have a couple more physical buttons that you don't have on here. So on the Karoo 2, you actually have to do some interactions via the touch screen, which can be a little bit tricky, especially during winter season when you're wearing gloves and uh, yeah, your fingers are just basically double the width suddenly um, to hit some of those buttons and some of those keys on here. Um, on the other hand, if you want to do some proper rerouting, you have to get your phone out anyways uh, with the Wahoo um, because there is a great companion app that works with it because you obviously can't really put in an address uh, via that interface. But yeah, based on own experience, I was riding with uh, my phone as my cycling computer for a long time and then basically upgrading to one of those. It feels like quite a big upgrade because uh, yeah, you don't have your super expensive phone up there in the front anymore. Just in case of a crash, you're not gonna damage your phone. It's all also, um, yeah, draining the battery life of your phone, of course, when you're using it as your bike computer and especially in emergency situations, you of course want to have uh, yeah, a fully charged phone. And uh, yeah, I mean, the views that you get on here, they're of course optimized for uh, cycling and giving you all the data that uh, yeah, you want and need to see sometimes. 
So yeah, with that, I'm gonna close this list of gadgets. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was uh, yeah something in that list for you that you might have not known about or that you found interesting. If you have any cycling gadgets, which are your favorites that uh, yeah haven't been part of this list, please let me know down there in the comments because um, yeah, I'm always looking for uh, for the new stuff. And uh, yeah, if you have actually any of those and you had some good experiences or especially bad experiences with them, also let me know in the comments. I really wanna hear what you're thinking about um, yeah, all these items. So I hope this was inspiring. I hope it helps some of you that maybe have been looking for a gift for a fellow cyclist. So uh, yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm gonna close this video and I hope to see you in the next one.